Sunset! Ah, still having trouble with the whole bipedal shtick? I feel your pain. But fret not, because I'm here to offer you a visit to quadrupedification. Him. Her Royal Highness, Princess Celestia of Equestria, Guardian of the Realm, and blah blah, royal titles, blah blah, cordial greeting, blibbity blah 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 blue, you wanna come by for lunch and tea? I think most of that was Twilight. The mathematically perfect writing is a dead giveaway. What? Free food. A chance to visit Equestria for a little bit. We'll have you back before the next crisis can come up. What's not to enjoy? Oh, oh, you're nervous about seeing your former teacher again. Yeah, I imagine your last visit with her wasn't all that pleasant. But hey, this is a chance to start over. You hit the scene as an entitled villain, all anger and venom. And for a while, that was the long and the short of it. Yet look at you now. You've saved the world twice already, and all signs point to a third win. You've made so much progress in trying to redefine yourself that you ended up saving another lost soul along the way. You, Sunset Shimmer, represent the idea that anyone can come back from the brink. Not just in the idea of good and evil, but in storytelling as well. So if you're worried about this here lunch, let's go over the ways you made this comeback. Truth be told, I'm kind of surprised you decided to stick around this here high school after the fall formal. Just to recap, after years of terrorizing the school population with cyberbullying, rumor mongering, and general unpleasantness, you went all she-demon and tried to brainwash everyone. Which I maintain was unnecessary. One song about conquering Equestria and they'd probably hop two without question. Compare that to being on bad terms with Celestia and it seems like Equestria might have been the easier place to start over. Yet one of the things that has made Equestria Girls more interesting is seeing how your personality unfolds. No easy thing given the rushed pace, but every now and then I see a little insight. I think you stayed behind because you are one driven individual. Between the first Equestria Girls and Rainbow Rocks, Sunset seemed to have become an entirely different personality. For a while I figured that anything from the first movie could be forgotten, but then Sunset said this in the Friendship Games. It isn't going to count if the other side doesn't really think they lost. That's an odd thing to say, Sunset. For one, I don't think it's true because there will always be grousing during a competition. Yet that line cast your past actions in a new light. When the goal was to acquire the element of harmony, I often wondered why Sunset tried to beat Twilight so much when it was easier just to follow the principal or vice principal and take the element by force. Yet that assumes a dispassionate approach and Sunset is indeed a passionate individual. I think she went ahead with those plans because she needed Twilight to know she'd been beaten, and Sunset herself needed to know that she'd bested Celestia's newest student. Taking that idea further, we saw in the Friendship Games how upset Sunset became when she couldn't figure out how magic works. And though she initially dismissed the games, she took it very seriously when she went up against Crystal Prep's Twilight Sparkle. You may not admit it, Sunset, but you are extremely competitive. Against others and yourself, I think you stuck around this place because you knew it would be harder to win back everyone's trust, and you wanted to know that you could meet that challenge. And guess what? You have! In fact, your position is stronger because you understand the two sides. One of the aspects of a fallen character is that they've seen the darker elements that a pure heroine might not. They know the feeling. Sunset's transformation in the second movie and ascension in the third carried all the more meaning when we saw her fall in the first. I've often wondered what those tears meant. Was the transformation painful? Was it warping her mind? Did she suddenly see her own darkness stripped away of all delusion or justification? I was left guessing until, once again, the third movie. I know you feel powerful right now, like you can have everything you want. I've been where you are. I've made the same mistake you're making. Even with all that magic and power, you'll still be alone. I think that transformation scared her more than anything. Yet now she has authority and confidence that the audience knows is hard won. This isn't unique to Sunset. When Twilight discusses the value of friendship or Luna cautions against jealousy and pride, their words carry more weight because they've been through periods where they fell into the same traps. They're speaking from experience. And now that the other Twilight is starting a new life, she's going to benefit from Sunset's experience. Because she has a friend and advisor who has been through the same events and can offer support without judgment. Something Sunset could have used during her struggle against three opponents. Rainbow Rocks had a lot to do to get folks cheering for Sunset. After all, the first movie had given her no redeeming characteristics. Yet people respond to the underdog scenario. That seemingly hopeless situation that challenges a protagonist regardless of history to rise above. Sunset faced more challenges than any other, including Twilight. Most obvious were the Sirens, who remained the best villains in the Equestria Girls line. They were powerful, manipulative, and knew just what to say to hurt others. Oh yes, you girls are so tight. And yet, 
They didn't ask you to be in the band. Probably afraid no one would want to see them play if she was in the group. Her second opponent was the attitude of Canterlot High. Even without the Siren's influence, Sunset faced hostility on all sides, even unintentionally from her friends. Uh, no offense. No offense. No offense. None taken. This steady conflict and tension did a lot to win back the audience. People invested in your struggle and in doing so became more invested in the world. Sunset became a vector by which the audience could start to care more. This wasn't like Twilight's goal to arrive, succeed, and depart. Sunset was in it for a new life, and she had to face a lot of challenges to earn it. But the most important opponent was yourself. One of the aspects I most enjoyed about Sunset is that she didn't just bounce back into the world's good graces. She was unsure of herself, holding back when she should speak, doubting if she had anything of worth to offer, and perhaps a lingering fear of the transformation. It wasn't until the end, when she had to face all three challenges at once, that we got to see her rise up and take her place as the seventh member. And boy do they need her. Mostly because she's always forthwith. What? You tried doing numerically themed topics based on three short films. You think it is easy? It is not? But one thing Sunset does well is point out what others might not want to hear. She does this not out of malice and certainly not bluntless like Sugarcoat. You're really bad at this! Sunset points out weaknesses or honest facts not to hurt people or just to speak, but because she wants them to improve. There's a genuine note of care to her words, though she won't hold back. Ever since you started this band, you've been letting little things get to you. But I do know that if you don't work out even the smallest problems right at the start, the magic of friendship can be turned into something else. And if we're not careful, you might become the Brody fandom's best reviewer. Seems kind of silly to me. I just don't understand why there's this big rivalry. Am I the only one who thinks this is overkill? I swear, Sunset, you top 100,000 subscribers in a week. But the funny thing about this practical view is that it doesn't always account for fun. That sometimes doing something because it doesn't make sense helps an individual. Thankfully, you have the support of five friends. It's a unique dynamic, very different from Pony Twilight and crew. Sunset is still getting used to a world without explicit magic and a life that doesn't involve her old goals. There's a sense of being adrift, and since she is so purpose-driven, that can be hugely frustrating. Then add to that unknown and unpredictable magic becoming more of a staple. Now, suddenly, she's a bridge between worlds. More experienced than any other in magic's use, but as ignorant as anyone else about the mechanics in this world. Given the pressure and her hesitation to forgive herself, Sunset could easily crack. So her friends support her attempts and try to cheer her up whenever they can. And sometimes it's they who give the honest answer. Not everything has to be magical to be important. Yet for all their good intentions, they are still teenagers. While Twilight's Pony crew are old enough to run businesses and become professional athletes and the like, these five have not yet stepped into that world of responsibility. So they're a little less mature, more prone to distraction. They often don't see the problem arising until it's grown to an exceptional threat, and even then their priorities might be skewed. We won! Sunset has lived a different life and I think is more mentally mature than the others. She keeps her head on the swivel and sees new threats before most would give it a second thought. So we have an interesting convergence. The maturity and awareness to look at one's surroundings and see beyond the immediate need, and the playfulness and innocence to keep a spirit upbeat. I think this group can meet somewhere in the middle. As Sunset reaches out, we see more of this world and become interested. Sunset's future is as big a mystery as the new magic seeping through. With determination, empathy, and maturity, she's finding her place in this world and entertaining the audience to boot. Point is, Sunset, you've always had a lot to offer, though it wasn't apparent at the start. A lot of the traits demonstrated could be used by someone who only cares for themselves or someone who wants the best for others. The struggle lies in defining a worldview and moving forward with the talents and abilities available. You've come a long way from the fallen student who wanted nothing but power for herself. I'd say Princess Celestia would be thrilled to see how you've grown, and you're not the kind of person who would lose to her own hesitation. So how's about you and I make the jump together and see what happens? Ready? One, two, three... O'Leary! And look who's here to greet you. That's a good way to end things. I'm Silver Quill. Thanks for watching.